Hi everyone, I'm here with my partner, Chris Blankenship, and we wanna share a four part series on a historical artist, Mark Lemon, where we caught up with him during the Alamo High Holy Days, celebrating Texas independence at the Alamo Brewery on the east side of San Antonio. Now, Mark has been a known quantity for a number of years, but it wasn't until he created his our, uh, um, amazing model of the Alamo complex in about 2007, 2008, where he really came into the limelight. And it eventually became the subject of a major coffee table book publication. And then later, the model was sold to none other than Alamo collector, Phil Collins. Oh, that's right. Phil Collins is a, such an avid collector of Alamo artifacts. Yes. Really interesting. Yeah, in this, uh, this is the first of four parts. Um, in this first uh, interview with Mark, we're actually gonna be at that same, in the conference room, at that at the Alamo Brewery talking about this massive painting that he had created. Let's uh, let's hear right from Mark. Well, my name is Mark Lemon. Uh, and what you're looking at is a 15 by eight foot or 120 square foot canvas that is, it, it constitutes the world's largest painting that shows the entire Battle of the Alamo. Uh, it took uh, a year and two months to complete, 5,500 hours. The ab absolute first step was to go and measure the back end of my garage, because if it had been 20 by 40, I would have made the painting 20 by 40. I made, the painting is the size of the back end of my garage. If it was bigger, if it was smaller, it would have been smaller. But that's, that's every, that's a, I got every inch that I could get and still be able to swing it out and get it out of there. Um, but it started, the whole process started when I actually had to engineer and build the frame for it, because they don't, they don't make stretch canvases this big. I had, to, I had to figure out the bracing points and, the, and the, the stress points on it and make it. So that was like a construction, pro construction project right off the bat. Once that was built, then I had to, you know, stretch the canvas and all of that. So that was June of 2013, and uh, it just proceeded from there. I sort of, I wanted to get, the, I wanted to get the sky out of the way first because it's the most, it was the least accessible, hardest to reach. I had to get on a step ladder to get up there that high because when I'm standing, when this is on the floor, because it was almost on the floor, it was just propped up by bricks. So when I'm standing up against it with it on the floor, my head is, is almost at the horizon, a little bit below it. There's about two feet left. Well, I wanted it to, I wanted it to tell the story. Uh, of course, it's, it's, a, it's an instant in time. You know, it's not a moving image. I wanted it to be able to tell the story. If someone was here who could talk people through it and point to various places along the compound, so they could visually get an, a, you know, a, a mental image and a, and a visual image of what actually happened here. So I, want, I chose, you know, I've been asked, why did you choose this particular moment? And it's because it's sort of the most climactic moment, I guess, is when uh, Mexicans breach, even though they don't breach it physically, they, they make it inside the compound here in, in significant numbers in the northeast and in the southwest. In the southwest corner, you can see that Morales' uh, light infantry, Cazadores, have made the 40-foot dash from uh, the Charlie house to the corner, scaled the, the corner there, captured the gun, uh, the 18-pounder, and then they're making their way down the ramp to actually capture the gate from the inside. Wow, Gary, it's amazing all of the effort and accuracy that goes into creating such a large piece of art. Absolutely. You know, in the next episode, Chris, we're going to look at how uh, Mark masters the details of both the lighting and perspective in this massive painting. Oh, can't wait. <laughs>